Hey everybody, it's Bevan. Um, I am just going to get right to it today. Uh, I'll go through the intro <laughs> later. It's Mercury Retrograde. I can do it however I want. Um, so hi, welcome. I'm glad you're here. I it, This wasn't a listener question. This was a me living my life experience that inspired me to create this um, video for YouTube for my vlog slash podcast episode. And uh I think that my friends uh, and my former partners would be very proud of me to, uh, if they understood, like, all of the different types of people who are in my life now. I used to have a very low tolerance, <laughs> very low tolerance for um, men specifically, but, like, also, like, people who didn't have the same sort of political inclination that I do. But what's been very interesting over time, especially over the last few years, is that I realized, or I was taught, actually, and it really applies, that when you take offense, you're actually giving your power away. You actually have to take the offense. Someone can offer offense to you, but you don't have to take it. You don't have to pick it up. And when I realized that, that really, like, lifted me up and enabled me to be like, okay, actually, <laughs> when I hear something foolish, I can just laugh. Uh, I can consider the source. That's a trick one of my therapists taught me is just consider the source. Like who is this person as an authority? Right. Um, but usually when things are coming up and they're pinging me, right? Like, and that's like when things are, um, when things used to offend me, right. Cause they might even still like, you know, I didn't love this situation that I was in or this, this conversation necessarily, but it got me thinking, it gave me some brain sparks and it really inspired me. Um, cause I have a dear friend who, um, isn't even a person who votes. <laughs> it's not even a person who engages in politics. And yet we have very different politics. And, and right, like I'm not a Democrat anymore. I think that they're all like in cahoots together, the Dems and the Republicans. Like it's a no thank you for me. I really just think that we need to do the best we can in our own communities and in our own circles of influence to make the world better. Um, and that the government is not going to save us. And that was just something that we were taught, right? So we are really different, but like realizing how much he allows random people from YouTube to influence him. I was like, I'm a random person on YouTube. I could influence people. So it's just like a good reminder for me to like do the thing, to like say the thing that's on my heart to talk about. And, um, and the, the comment he made was like, I've known a lot of gay people my whole life and there's way more gay people now. And I think people are just choosing to be gay because it's trendy. That was like the gist of what he said. It wasn't quite exactly like that. And it wasn't as cavalier as that sounds. Um, and this person, this is a person who I know their values, right? Like I know, like, and we have a lot of values alignment and that's where I can coalesce and find love. But like the, the people skill I'm working on the most is meeting people at common ground and then taking them to higher ground. And so I just wanted to talk through like what my philosophy is around, like whether or not gay, being gay is a choice and like the whole deal of what's happening lately versus before. So the first thing I want to mention is that uh, we lost an entire generation of gay men to the HIV AIDS crisis. Like people were really left behind by the government when this disease ravaged a minority community. Um, and there's a lot of history you can read about that, but that's like tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of lives lost that are not here to be present gay elders. So those were people who could have been gay in the 80s and weren't around because they were dead, right? 90s too, right? Like um, I'm so grateful for the medications that are keeping people alive and enabling people to become elders. And I'm so grateful for the medications that are available to prevent transmission of HIV. And I really hope that we actually get these kinds of things for um, the coronavirus, the virus that causes long COVID, uh, because I'm seeing the same kind of stuff play out, the government abandonment, the ignoring of what's going on. But that's a different topic for a different day. So first of all, we're just missing a bunch of people. Second of all, um, I would say that like when we're talking about sexuality, we're really talking about sexual orientation. Um, we're talking about identity, sexual identity and attract and, um, and behavior. Right. And so, and I talked about this, I, there's an episode I did about six months ago about uh, whether true love is a scam. This is a listener question and is true monogamy not possible. And I talked about like monogamy being like both an orientation and a behavior, right? And like, whereas like I have had probably only three full years if you stacked it all up of actual monogamy, um, my monogamous practice has been most of my relationships because I am far more obsessed with work <laughs> than 
than I am with um, going out and doing the work to date people or get laid because it is actually a lot of work. It's some of my friends, it's like a part-time job getting laid, right? So um, just remember that like just because somebody may have an orientation one way, their practice might be different. And that's behavior, right? And so um, I think that most people just like, this is me as a 40-something gal, um, having been gay more than half my life. And like most of my friend groups are queer. Like I really like the straight people I hang out with are few and far between, but I'm getting more straight friends. And I have healed a lot. Actually, I've really healed a lot of my uh, stuff around men and being afraid of men because I think I was raised to believe that men were a giant disappointment and totally not to be relied on, which like, you know, my dad and I I think had a soul contract. Um, and I've talked about my grief around my dad. Those are good episodes too, to go back into if you're new to my stuff. Um, but like my dad and I had a soul contract about him, like kind of abandoning me so that I could be strong without him. But of course that came with the, you know, the feelings around men, right? Like, the, I don't, I, I'm never alone with men unless it's in a professional context, right? Like there's just so, you know, you can just choose how you behave, right? You can just choose where you go, right? And I think orientation, like for me, I'm on, on a spectrum, right? Like if sexuality is a spectrum, I'm like gay all the way to like, I made this joke not long ago. I'm gay all the way to John Mayer, right? Like, like he could get it. He's an excellent dude. Uh, who's done excellent things in his life and is really smart and sparky and I enjoy his brain, right? If I enjoy someone's brain, that matters way more to me than their genitals. And like most of my partners have shifted their gender identity and expression. Um, Maybe not expression, but a lot of identity stuff has happened since we dated, right? And so like like my first love uh, was a girl identified at the time, but then as we have more language and understanding, like that's their non-binary, right? So like Lots of non-binary, lots of trans in my dating history. So I just have a lot of like, what even is gender? What even is sexuality, right? Like understanding and umbrella stuff. And I'm going to also posit like, who even cares, right? Like if there are more gay people, quote unquote, now, who cares, right? Like what other people do that doesn't involve you sexually doesn't matter to you, you know? Like if you're that concerned about other people's sexual identities and orientations where you want to like protect kids from like experimenting, with their sexuality, I, 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 ha- I hate to break it to you, but abstinence only doesn't work. And like kids are going to experiment whether you <laughs> make it a safe place for them to do that and for them to know that you love them or not. Right. Like, and I want to be, I long to be the kind of parent slash grandparent slash aunt slash person in someone's life, friend who is just loving and accepting of whoever this person is. And as they change and evolve, right. And just really open to experiencing a person as they continue to change, because it's not just sexuality that changes over time. Right. But like, okay, so I was talking about being on a spectrum, right? It's like, so I think there's more fluidity and like, we're seeing this now too, because like kids are growing up with media that shows them that being a diverse sexuality, diverse genders is a thing, right? Like I grew up and I didn't even understand that being gay was a thing you could be, even though when I was a little, little one, I was around a lot of lesbians because my mom was out of the closet briefly. Um, I, she and my dad split up when I was 18 months old and then until I was about four, she dated a lot of women and I was around a lot of lesbians and I still didn't understand that being lesbian was a thing you could be until I was 14 years old because there just was no media representation. My mom kind of like went back in the closet um, and was dating men again and so I just was clued out, right? Until I finally was aware like, oh wait, being gay is a thing you could be because like it was like a weird um, thing for me because I was attracted to men uh, or boys, I should say, like in my life, I had crushes on boys, but like, uh, I didn't get it. Like, and, and my experience with being attracted to women is a little different. There's some nuance there, but like, I really am just attracted to this, like a kind of colorful masculinity, right? Like a little flamboyant masculinity. Um, tender masks is kind of the gist of who I tend to be attracted to, but it's a spectrum and it shifts and changes as I shift and change. Right. And so anyway, all that to say, like if more people, have, I mean, gay people have always existed, queer people have always existed, trans people have always existed. This is something that has always happened, right? Whether or not you heard about it, history is written by the victor, right? Like it's written to support the victor. It's written to support systems and structures, right? Like white supremacy is a construct, right? That uh, made it okay <laughs> to subjugate people of color for enslavement, right? And that's fucked up, you know? So like, 
just remember, like, we have this, this straight mindset, right? Like, we don't need a straight pride day because we live in a heterosexist, like, or a heterosexually dominant culture, right? So all that to say, people who have an orientation that includes a genre, a, a wide swath of people, right, might choose one or the other. And is that a choice? I don't know. But they might choose to just focus their orientation on the thing that feels safe and easy and dating men as a woman. Um, I don't know. To me, it doesn't feel safe and easy. But some people like the shelter of like heterosexuality and being like in a dominant um, class, right? Like people, right? If you're looking at people in a hierarchical way, which is made up, right? Like you don't have to live like that. Um, this is an invitation that you don't have to live like that. Um, anyway, so that's my thought. Like, I don't necessarily think like being gay is a choice. I really do think it's more of an orientation that kind of comes out in behavior. Um, and that identity like just creates like a soft place to land, to explore and experience something that's outside of the dominant paradigm. Um, I was very challenged by Shaman Durek, who's like one of my favorite spiritual thought leaders. Um, I remember like it was like 2018, maybe 2019, it was an episode of his podcast where he talked about how identities were like false, um, false distinctions between people. And I was like, what? As someone whose blog is queerfatfem.com and someone who needed to meet other fat people who loved their bodies in order to understand that was possible for me. Like, I'm like, I don't understand. Identity feels like a thing to me. But then I kind of, I was meditating on it and I realized, oh, this is just like, a place to heal. It's almost like purgatory, right? Like it's like a place to go. Like once you realize like, okay, it's not this, like the dominant paradigm it's over here and like connecting with people. And a hard lesson that I had to learn was like, just cause someone was also gay or just cause someone was also fat or also femme or a queer fat femme did not mean that they were trustworthy and that they were my friend, even though for a while it really seemed that way. So <laughs> yeah, we all have to learn our lessons either the joy path or the hard path or some hybrid path. And I'm working on choosing joy. Um, and that is also just about like observing and experiencing people's behavior and then making my choices thusly. So, um, I don't know. I, I hope this helps somebody out there who is just wondering is being gay a choice. Why are there more gay people now than ever before? I think it's just people are coming of age with the awareness that like gay is a thing that you can be and that queer is a thing you can be and like non-binary is a thing you can be and like it's all a spectrum and we can play and it's all fun and mind your business is my other <laughs> takeaway I want you to have um this is a rare podcast episode where I let myself re-record it and do another one because I did not remember to talk about mind your business and I really do think that's just such an important thing to remember is just run your own race worry about your sexuality don't worry about other people's don't worry about there being more kids and don't worry about like what happens to kids if they fall in with gay people as a young person I think it's way better than falling in with lots of different groups and then I would also say the military you know like I was I've been way more worried about uh, my cousin's kid who joined the military and is using white supremacist ah! <laughs> white supremacist um, finger thing, finger signs in photos than I have about any queer kid ever. So, um, but you know, all I can do is pray for them and like pray for the situation to resolve itself and that everyone who needs to learn their lessons is learning their lessons. And um, yeah, that's, that's all you ever can do. <laughs> Most of the time we can't do anything but send our thoughts and prayers to something. So might as well do the thing that helps, right? Measurable impact on outcomes. Um, if you want more from me, um, fatkiddanceparty.com is my aerobics class. Um, you can support the podcast through my Patreon page, Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com slash F-K-D-P, which stands for Fat Kid Dance Party, my aerobics class. I, give me 12 weeks. Give me just 12 weeks in a row where you show up for my class, either uh, in a pre-recorded on-demand class um, or to a Zoom class. I teach live on Zoom worldwide. You can join me from anywhere. Um, I think it can change your life. I've just seen this happen over and over again where people just show up, they're regulars, and even just regulars for a while, and I just see their, the way they perceive themselves, their bodies, um, their style. Like, so many different things can just change and shift over time. Um, and I really am here to help you learn to regard yourself with love and grace because that's the work I've been doing my whole life uh, for a long time. I thought my mission was to make the world safe for people to love themselves. I can't change the world. I can simply keep changing myself and show you what it's like and hopefully give you some, uh, some fast tracks 
uh, to learn the lessons faster than I had to. Um, so I hope this helps. Um, I have a podcast, uh, Bevan, a femme over 40 and her friends podcast. It's on all major podcast platforms, plus this YouTube channel, self care party. Um, and I would love to help you just become in alignment with who you really are and, uh, enjoy the one life that you're given in this incarnation and this iteration of you. I love you so much. Thanks for tuning in. Bye everybody.